Welcome back to our Adobe for Education channel. We're so excited to be here this week covering Adobe Max and hosting community ancillary sessions. So before our keynote in the morning and afternoon after Max is over for the day, we've been bringing you content from different panels, product team members, and more. So we're thrilled to have you here with us today. If you're just joining in, please post in the comments whether you're tuning in from Facebook, from Twitter, from YouTube, Share in the chat where you're joining us from, what you teach, and where you're based in the world. Uh, we love that we have such a global community of educators um, and would love to continue to support you. Um, for those who I haven't met, my name is Clara Galan, and I manage our educator community um, here at Adobe. And today I'm joined by my colleague, Rick Treitman, who is our entrepreneur in residence at Adobe. I love that title, Rick. Um, and he is focusing on um, liquid mode, particularly in Adobe Acrobat. So he focuses on document cloud um, and all the education initiatives um, within that. So Rick, I will hand it off to you to introduce yourself, share a little bit more about your background, and then dive right into liquid mode. Thanks, Clara. Um, so as, as Clara said, my name is Rick Treitman. I'm based in the Boston area uh, in Massachusetts. And uh, I tried to be a teacher once upon a time. Uh, it didn't work out, so I jumped into high tech. Um, I'm going to start with a, with a video, and then that'll give you the highlights of what we're going to talk about. And then we're going to go into some of the details. So let's watch this, and I'll be right back. <laughs> We've been reading fixed text for maybe 2,000 years, having to move to online and electronic learning. A lot of people have trouble reading. If I get a PDF on my phone, but I've got a pinch and zoom to try to read it. This is important for all readers, whether you're a good reader or a poor reader, an adult or you're a child, personalizing text can actually improve your reading speed, your accuracy, and your comprehension. I saw a child really struggle learning to read, but with a personalized reading format, you could see him visibly relax. And that was the beginning of a life change for that little boy. And, sorry, you remind me not to tell that story. Um, my son. Being able to personalize my reading helped me to really understand what I was reading. On top of that, I wasn't straining my eyes, so the whole experience was great. Adobe's incredible scientific community are a part of this effort, and we're hoping to engage other industry partners. Because one of the things that has become clear to us is that the academic community in partnership with industry is really likely to be the combination that solves this problem. When for-profit businesses, non-profit organizations, education get together to solve a big problem, everybody's boat floats. And we really need to invite all those partners in on this because we're talking about something as universal as reading. It's a whole lot bigger than Adobe, but we'd love to be the spark that gets us started. So 
um, let's let's dive into to what we were talking about as we um, as we showed in the um, in the video. We're tackling this this larger problem of students not being able to read. And what I'm putting across the screen right now um, are some of the American um, percentages of kids who are reading uh, at at level. And we have here in the states um, only. 54% of adults are, are, in fact, let me start over, 54% of adults are reading below the sixth grade level. Um, and it's a $2.2 trillion annual cost. Uh, so the question is, how do we address this problem? How do we make it better? And it might, uh, the easiest thing to do would just be buy everybody a pair of magic reading glasses that turn them into readers. You know, we could take them uh, to an eye doctor, we could choose the glasses that work for them. We could give them tests where we change uh, various aspects of the of the font and see which uh, formats work better for them. As we got to things like this, what we would start to be simulating is what we believe a lot of people struggle with today, and what and that's an effect called crowding. Um, and what crowding does is it makes it very hard for the reader to pull the characters apart and to actually see the words. And if you're just learning how to read, um, this can be an extremely frustrating uh, experience for you and can make it very hard for you to learn to read at all. And even if you do learn, know how to read and you have some sense, uh, uh, some small part of this, uh, it can still be a struggle. You're still gonna read slowly and you may be reading with a lot of um, strain and imagine if you're reading a font that's hard to read and the font that i'm showing you right now is the you know a simulation of the font that was used in the first typeset um book that existed about 600 years ago you were looking at guten a page from gutenberg's bible um and if you think about it uh even if i could read latin um, i'd have a hard time uh getting my eyes around this so if but if i were able to change it if i were able to look at it a little bit larger or space the characters out or even change um, the font that I was reading, I would find it a lot easier to read. Uh, and that's where Readability Matters uh, comes in. And you saw two of the Readability Matters principles um, in the video, both Marjorie and Kathy have been working on research over the last 15 years that shows that if you give individuals control over their reading environment, they can read better. So if you can let the individual find the font that works the best for them, find the spacing that works the best for them, uh, the line height or letting, um, and very important character spacing uh, to deal with that problem of crowding, um, then you can, uh, you can really affect how well they read um, and, uh, and how well they comprehend. So it it might just be possible uh, to build a pair of magic reading glasses. And we decided that we would prototype that in Acrobat Reader. Uh, and this is the prototype that we built a number of years ago. I think it was about three or four years ago that we built this now. Um, and we took all of the formatting parameters that Readability Matters had been experimenting with and built them into a PDF reader. And we took that prototype into um, a class in um, two classes in San Jose, a third grade class and a seventh grade class. And we tested with a total of about 80 students. I'm showing you 33 students that were in the third grade classroom. Um, and when we gave them the base reading test, we found the fastest student was reading at about 63 words a minute. And the slowest student was about 100 um, words slower than that. And in fact, this little guy, um, who was reading at 69 words a minute was really at risk, um, not only of not developing into a reader at all, um, but of having to be held back in the third grade. And this, we did our testing at the end of March, um, which means the kids had been in school for about six weeks, uh, six months. Um, and he had shown no improvement in his reading over the entire six months. When we found custom reading formats for each of the children using our prototype. These are the improvements in reading speed that we saw. Um, and you'll notice that our little at-risk guy moved from being completely at risk to, to only some um, risk. In fact, he jumped 27 uh, 
words per minute. Now, what's really interesting here is not only did our at-risk child uh, jump by 27 words a minute, but our fastest reader jumped the same 27 words a minute. And what we believe, so what this shows, um, it validates some of the work that Readability Matters has been doing. And that is that changes to text when we can individualize it for each reader um, helps not only the struggling reader, but it also uh, helps the most proficient reader. Another way to look at this data um, is to see that the average um, student in this class jumped 20 words a minute, uh, uh, 20 words a minute. And general um, uh, progress in reading on a third grader is roughly one word per week of speed which means that over 20 weeks, you would expect the average third grader to gain 20 words a minute in their reading speed. We did that simply by changing the settings. Um, so 50% of the class um, accelerated by 20 weeks or more in their reading development when they had a custom reading format. We saw similar um, gains in the seventh grade, not quite as dramatic because this was an oral test where the kids are reading out loud um, and you can only speak so fast. So the characteristics of the um, formats that we were able to play with in our prototype were font, font size, character spacing, line height, and even character stretch where we could play with the shape of the font. Um, we've done subsequent tests, which I'll talk about in a little while with adults where we found by just by finding the most effective font, we can, ju we can jump an adult reader by as much as 127 words a minute. So indeed, it is possible uh, to find an individual pair of reading glasses electronically uh, for every reader. Um, and we've now gone beyond the prototype and put that into Acrobat. Uh, we call it liquid mode. And it's available for mobile devices. So you can get it today. Um, if you have the latest version of Acrobat Reader on your, on your smartphone or on your tablet, um, you've already got it. Uh, we can, you can, it's also available at the Google Play Store, so a Play Store-compatible Chromebook um, is capable of running this as well. We haven't yet gotten to all five characteristics of the text format, but we are getting three of the most important ones, which is size, character spacing, and line height. Uh, so, here's a simulation of what liquid mode looks like. Imagine I get an academic paper on my phone. And in this case, this is one of the first papers that we, with our research team, um, have published. I'm going to have to pinch and zoom um, and move, kind of slide around in order to read this. And it's not a whole lot of fun. But if I grab that little liquid mode button up at the top and click it, I've now taken that two column document and I'm flowing it to the size of the window that I have to use, which makes it somewhat easier. But if I get to my custom reading settings, uh, which I've got circled right here, I've now got control over those three aspects of the format that I talked about before. I can change the font size. I can change the character spacing. Again, very important if crowding is a problem. And I can change the line spacing. So now I have a document that looks like this. Um, here's the liquid mode, um, which is a good step forward. And here is the customized version that works for my particular uh, reading style. Now, you saw in the video that we've opened up a reading lab uh, with the University of Central Florida. And the reason that we're doing that is that we don't think that we've got all the answers here. In fact, we think we're posing more questions than we're, than we're answering. Um, and if we go back to our example of Gutenberg, we've been reading um, fixed type in books since since Gutenberg, well, 600 years since Gutenberg um, public, you know, first printed the Bible and 5,000 years um, since Egyptians first um, invented reading and we started reading off of papyrus. Um, and we've done plenty of research um, on, on reading fixed uh, fonts on paper, but we've done, we've only been reading electronically with these kinds of reading controls for maybe 10 years. 
Um, and there are controls like this in um, Immersive Reader from Microsoft. There are controls like this in on your Amazon Kindle. Um, we're not the first people to give you control over your reading format, but we are the first people to give you control over your PDF reading. Um, but 10 years is not a lot of time to really understand uh, the dynamics of user controllable electronic fonts. And that's why we're partnering with the University of Central Florida um, to look at all of the aspects of what happens when readers can customize um, their reading. What does it mean for document design? Um, how does environment play a role? How do our individual differences play a role? And how do we um, how do we change the interfaces? How do we now present documents to people? And how do we get to this sort of ultimate goal of magic reading glasses? Um, so we're, we're forming a consortium um, of people to work on this right now. It's UCF, it's Adobe, it's Readability Matters. Um, we've already done some uh, published research um, from our lab. What we found was that not only um, do we tend to be picky personally about how we read? Um, we tend to like certain fonts and not others. But one of the things that we found with our um, with one of our initial studies is that the font you like is not necessarily the font that's best for you, uh, and and that's been published work. But that if you can find the right font, um, you can improve your speed, you can improve your comprehension, and you can lower um, uh, things like. Um, stress and strain. Um, this is, these are the results from, from, from part of that study, uh, which in every quartile of the study, we showed improvement. Um, that 127 words a minute can translate to as much as 10 pages an hour of throughput uh, for an accomplished reader. Um, so we're now mounting a virtual readability lab, and this is gonna be open to the world, not only to use, but to mount experiments. Um, this is the front page of our lab. I'll give you the URL in a minute. Um, we've already had um, groups of uh, freshmen at uh, the University of Arizona uh, use this during their summer boot camp um, to find their best to, to compare their favorite font with their fastest font and to find their best spacing and then to dial that into the reading that they'll be doing um, as they as they do their studies this year. Uh, the other thing that we're doing on this lab, it's known um, in the business as a lab in the wild. This is open to researchers to put their own studies um, up here. And we have a lot of research tools that we're gonna be making, making available to any researcher uh, who's interested in joining our effort of better understanding how electronic and customizable font, uh, type uh, works for um, for different kinds of readers. Um, and so what we're trying to do, as we talked about in the video, is create a partnership between industry, between nonprofits and education um, to solve this problem of people who struggle to read or even good readers who want to read better. Uh, these are the these are some of the partners that we have so far. Um, we invite anybody to contact us and join us. Um, we're working from all the way from the kindergarten level through with a world education. We're working with adults who have not yet learned to read or who struggle with read reading um, worldwide. And we're doing um, I'll be in fact doing a uh, workshop with them tomorrow um, where we where we address the uh, adult uh, learning. Um, these are all um, organization or uh, universities and, and colleges that are working with us on various parts of our research. Um, if you want to talk to us further, uh, you can go to the Readability Lab at readabilitylab.xyz. Uh, if you want to contact me, you can contact me at treitman at adobe.com. Um, we also have a general um, and more uh, uh, easy to remember address, which is readable at adobe.com. All of that comes to me. Um, I'm now going to pause and see if there are any questions. Perfect. Thank you so much, Rick, for walking through that. And um, if there are any questions from folks, please post them in the chat if you're joining from Twitter or Facebook or YouTube. Um, 
But any advice, you know, for for an educator who wants to try it for the first time, you know, any any tips that you have once they go to the site, kind of what does that uh, kind of first experience look like? So, I, first, I, ex I invite everybody to download uh, our mobile reader uh, and drop some PDFs into there and play with it yourself and see if the reading experience works better for you than the PDF as it comes. Um, uh, as it would come if you didn't have any controls over it. Uh, we're really interested in understanding uh, how well it works for you, um, how, what other kinds of controls you'd like to see. Um, we're also looking for um, classrooms uh, that want to work with us. If you want to, if you have, if you're a reading teacher in particular, uh, we'd love to work with you. We'd love to see how it works with with your um, with your students. If you want to try the readability lab. Um, jump into the lab at readability, uh, dot, readabilitylab.xyz and right here um, you will see there are three experiments that we have up and running right now. And what you will get back are um, uh, metrics on, um, on how well you do uh, across various fonts um, and across various spacings. And you, what we do find um, the one thing we know is that it's going to be different for you. It's going to be different for each of your students, um, and and yeah. that's that's what's the most interesting for us. Yeah, it's amazing to see even having a specific font, different spacings. It it makes such a huge impact just uh, just with comprehension, um, literacy um, as students are are navigating through that. Um, and you know, the last question I would ask um, before we uh, end this live stream for today is that. Um, there are a lot of exciting announcements at Adobe Max. And this, I mean, even liquid mode is really um, exciting this year because it's a new initiative within Acrobat. It's really going to help so many students. But what can we um, expect from the future, like for, for Acrobat? Like what can be some things that teachers could look forward to, of course, that we can share, you know, publicly? <laughs> um, I think the next thing that we're going to do is make it much easier for you to get documents in and out of um, uh, of of reader, mm -hmm. um, if, particularly if you're in iOS, it's not. It's the, the reader on a for for example on a, on a phone is the phone's um, individual reader. It's not ours, um, and you have to go. You have to jump through some hoops, and we're working on a number of ways to make that a lot easier. We're also working on ways to connect the document cloud to cloud storage that are the, that that you use so now um, if if you are putting all your assignments for example in google drive uh, it's a whole lot easier for the students to pull the the reading from google drive directly into uh, reader um, i think what we're trying to do is really um, take the friction out mm -hmm. of moving pdfs uh, from th from the distribution uh, mm -hmm to Adobe Reader. And that could be really exciting for so many teachers that might be using other third-party platforms or, you know, if they're using, a lot of teachers I know are using Google Docs, um, so that could be really exciting for them. Um, and then actually, one last question. Um, for an educator who um, is teaching general education subjects, maybe in high school, um, how could how could he or she use this? Like, how, how would this be something that, um, you know, tomorrow in class, whether that's a virtual class or in person, how could they really use liquid mode? Like what would be the biggest benefit? Well, I think the biggest, so there's, I think there are a number of them. Uh, given the situation we're in with COVID, what I'm get, what I'm hearing a lot is mm -hmm. that they're what we call device contention. You might have three, stu three kids um, in a household and maybe one Chromebook for them to share. Yeah. But, and uh, imagine that they have reading assignments that are on PDF. Uh, without liquid mode, reading those PDFs on the phones that are in the house would probably be quite difficult. Yeah. But with liquid mode, we're now opening up those phones as a reading surface that I think is going to be a whole lot more uh, useful to people. Um, the other, um, the, the other uh, win, uh, particularly, mm -hmm get into high school and you get heavier and heavier reading loads, and we know that a lot of these reading loads are in PDF, if you can find your format, you're mm -hmm. going to be able to read with a whole lot more uh, uh, efficiency mm -hmm. than, than 
important if you have to accept the format as it comes. Absolutely. And Rick, if we could just go, because I see a couple new people have joined in on the live stream. So if you, again, if you're just joining in on the live stream, post in the chat if you have a question or you know share where you're joining us from today. Um, I'd love to see that slide one more time that the difference you can see within font uh, with the, um, uh, let's see, let's go back to that one slide with the three different sections of font. And it's incredible to see how different that is to comprehend mm -hmm. Um, oh, different pieces of text. Yes. Uh, where was that? Yes. Right here. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think that this this you're you're right, Clara. This really does sum it up. Um, yeah. Yeah. We we are moving from a world where the designer mm -hmm. decides decides what your reading experience is going to be into a world where you decide what your reading experience is going to be. And once you have the knowledge that a certain format works better for you than others, um, then if you can dial that into your reading experience, regardless of, of where you are, um, you're gonna be in much better shape. Um, we, we work with, uh, some of you may know Shelly Rodrigo, who's one of our Adobe education leaders and is the director of the um, writing lab at University of Arizona. Um, she's gonna have her students submit their essays in her personal format so that her reading load is easier as she goes as she goes through the as she goes through the essays yeah. um, she's also got, she's also got them learning what their personal reading mode is for themselves so that their reading load um, can can be eased somewhat um, and so that they don't have to struggle with somebody else's format absolutely and and teachers who are tuning in i can only imagine if you have students that have different preferences in terms of how they're interpreting the text having something like this allows every individual student to have their different settings. Um, and as, as shown in that video, it's incredible to see how comprehension um, can go up. And I can even speak as, you know, I studied English literature and reading Beowulf and, and some of the other um, older texts, it's having that version was so difficult to, to be able to kind of go through and having something like this is, is really incredible. Um, yeah, so you can see it in real time um, change. I'm gonna. I was gonna move back to um, the, the this slide too, which is I think my favorite. Yeah. Uh, what was really interesting about this um, this student who was who was really at risk um, when we he what the reading teachers had been doing with him was giving him larger and larger and larger fonts. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, in in many schools, what happens is they just go to the Xerox machine and enlarge it by two hundred percent. Yeah. Um, we had all of our formats sort of laid out on the desk that the teacher, that the um, that the tester was was using, and he and we were testing, as I said before, with third and seventh grade students. He mm -hmm. actually looked across the desk and picked out the format that worked for him the best, and it was a seventh grade format. He needed a smaller font with much more mm -hmm. space. The larger font was not the answer for this. For him, interesting. Uh, so it's it's highly individual, um, and and that's that's kind of the beauty of this is that we're giving a set of we're providing a set of controls um, that can really allow every individual to adjust the text to their eyes rather than their eyes kind of working to adjust to the text. The text, yeah, absolutely. It's incredible to see the the results here, and you know, for those if you're tuning in live or watching the recording. Um, yeah, we'd love to see post in the chat how you would use this with students. And I think the beauty of this is it's no matter um, what subject area you're teaching, uh, what grade level, this really is applicable to everything. Um, I see Chevy just um, joined in. Hi, Chevy. Uh, from Florida, I teach special education, and this is so breathtaking. Uh, that's that's great to hear. We'd love to hear, you know, how it's uh, working with your students, um, you know, I'll, I'll pull up that link again, but we'd love to hear feedback from you. And what I, I love about Adobe is that although, you know, most of our team were a team of uh, former educators, um, but we work hand in hand with teachers and we want to know day in, day out, what's working in the classroom for you, what features are working. And we take that and, and see you as a partner in our product development process so that we're really creating something that, that benefits you and benefits your students. Um, so we'll kind yeah. of pull that up again. And, and let me just underline that we're at the very beginning of this journey. We're we're not rolling this out as sort of an as an as an endpoint. 
um, but really as a beginning point. We we just started adding certain controls. We're looking at others. Um, you might have noticed that um, when when we talked about what we could put in. We're only dealing with size, character, spacing, and line height. The next thing for us is to tackle the font substitution problem because we know that that's that is really important, mm -hmm. um, and we don't we don't have it in there yet. But as I say, this is the beginning. So people like Chevy, um, we're going to develop this going forward with educators and with researchers. Um, that's that's why uh, we've got the lab going at, at UCF. Um, it's why we're working with nonprofits like World Education and Readability Matters. We really believe that we have the beginning of an answer and a whole lot of questions. And it's going to be up to us and you working with us um, to find answers to all of the questions that this sets up. Absolutely. And um, Rick, I'm just going to put this up here one more time. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. I know there's a lot going on at Adobe Max. Uh, do you have anything, any specific sessions or anything that you're going to check out later today? Oh, I haven't had time to even look. <laughs> um, but I will <laughs> say, that if you're interested in fonts and you didn't see it, um, it's still available on demand. Um, there is a really cool uh, 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 film, a uh, video um, of a old let's call it an old fashioned um, typesetting found uh, typesetting uh, letterpress in Germany, uh, talking yeah. about how characters are built and put on a press. Um, and you start to understand what what fixed type really means, and how far we're going to go away from that. But but there's a but there's a beauty to the fixed type too. And if you're interested in things like fonts and type, which we at Adobe obsess over, mm -hmm. uh, I really recommend pulling that up and watching it. That's great, and that's a, that's part of Max programming, or that's a separate. It's part of the Max program. Max programming. Okay, yep. perfect. Um, and I, if you, and again, if you are haven't registered for Adobe Max yet, it's free. Um, a lot of amazing sessions. Uh, you can check it out at max.adobe.com. Um, we have one more day, and then uh, tomorrow. We will be on Friday. We'll be a live streaming here. A couple more sessions on our channels. Um, we have um, Tacy Trowbridge is going to be leading a session, and we will also have the American School of Barcelona joining us uh, to talk about teacher professional development. Um, so, Rick, thank you so much uh, for taking the time today. I have that up there, and, and yeah, any anything else final that you want to share or any other resources? Um the only thing I want to say is um, we're not going to be able to do this without help. Um, and it's the educators that are going to help us. So thanks, everybody who attended. Uh, thanks, Clara, for inviting me. And um, I hope you enjoy the rest of Max. Perfect. Thanks so much, Rick. And we will see everyone live uh, tomorrow on our channels uh, starting at 8 a.m. Pacific time. So thank you again. We know that this year um, has been um, a lot of obstacles for educators we are here with you. Um, we appreciate you taking the time to, to join with us, share with us, learn with us, um, and we will see you tomorrow. So have a great rest of your day, everyone.